Hey, welcome back. Today, I'm going to be showing you how we use motion sensors to automate our basement and have it do what we need it to do with its lights and how you can do it as well. So stay tuned. Okay, I'm going to start with talking about this Acara motion sensor. It's my favorite motion sensor available currently. And then I'm going to show you what it actually is like when we walk through our basement and how the lights interact with us. And then I'll show you in Home Assistant how you can make it work for you. And just so we're clear, this isn't sponsored or anything. I bought the Acara motion sensors. They're just my favorite, and I wanted to share that with you. So it's a pretty simple motion sensor. We have the motion sensor here, and it has a little stand that I actually have 3M together right on this one. But you can move it and mount it however you like on the wall or, you know, on the ceiling above, however you'd like. And really versatile, works really well, really responsive. So really great device. Um, it's a Zigbee device. So it integrates directly into Home Assistant with your Zigbee coordinator. We have the Acara motion sensors throughout our basement. As you can see, they're in a variety of locations. And that's really helpful for us to track our movements throughout the basement and know what's occupied and what's not. So enough talk about the Acara motion sensor. Let me show you how it works. So I'm gonna open the door and walk down the steps and you get to see how opening the door activates some lights and then the motion going down the steps starts turning on other lights. And as I progress, more and more lights turn on. You can see that once I opened up the door, the first light kicked on and then the motion kicked on the next light. So as we progress through the basement, there's additional lights that turn on. So let's go over here and you can see it's dark back this hallway. But as soon as I walk here, past the motion sensor around the corner, it's gonna light up everything else. So just like that, the rooms respond to us, you know, moving towards them and turn on the lights as needed. And then once we vacate the rooms and the adjacent rooms for a particular part, you know, amount of time, then the lights all turn back off. So we don't have to touch any light switches at all. We just walk around and they turn on and off as needed. And then we do have some override virtual switches so that if you don't want them on for any reason, you can do that. Furthermore, when it gets to be late at night or early in the morning, all of these lights actually turn on at a reduced brightness based on time of day and some other factors. So we have all kinds of automations built in, but this is all thanks to these Acara motion sensors. All right, now that you've seen how it works, I'm going to show you what it looks like in Home Assistant. So I have the automations pulled up and I have it filtered down just to our basement motion. And then I'll go into one of them as an example here. So I'll look at the basement game room that we're standing in currently. And what you can see for the basement game room on automation is we have a lot of motion sensors. So essentially it's everything that's at the basement motion area or adjacent to it. So anything else that we can use to trigger it. That includes this theater door right here with the Acara door and window sensor, the contact sensor, it includes the motion sensors in our kitchen, a hallway, stairwell, everything that's adjacent to this room. And this is really the central hub. So there's a lot here. Next, it looks to make sure that the basement motion is on. And this is actually a helper that I established so that we don't have to worry about having the automations triggered when we don't want them to. So you can go into the UI and turn it off, or we could ask you know Google to turn off the motion. Um, and then we have no response for the on or off from these automations and it bypasses those. So it's just an extra, you know, if we have, you know, that off, we don't want this to occur. So we can we can do it in a manual process there and avoid this. And next we have the conditional executions here. So if we have certain things in play, we want a certain, you know, expectation of the lights. So for example, overnight, we don't want them to turn on as, as bright. So we have that type of information, you know, set up here. So first we test if any of these conditions are met. And the first one is seven conditions that have to be met. Basically, it's for a situation where we open that theater door and the lights are off at the front of the theater. We don't want this to be blinding. Or if it's between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. and the lights are off, then what it'll do is it will turn these on. And you can see at the 5% brightness here in Home Assistant. And if none of those are the case, then we go into this else statement. And in our instance, we check a couple of things to see if they are met. So we have that the lights are off or that the front theater lights are on so that we can trigger the lights to come up to 100% brightness. So if, if we have the theater, you know, a movie going on and it's over and somebody comes out before we turn those lights on, 
once we turn those lights on and there's motion detected, then it's going to, you know, up these lights to that 100% because at that point you're not coming out from the dark, you're coming out from the light and it makes sense to match, you know, that we also have a lot of light out here then. And I will say this is a pretty complex automation for what it's doing. You could have, have this much more simplified and just use the triggers, um, but we like to have everything really fine tuned. So we get into a lot of logical statements on ours, but again, you wouldn't really have to. I'm just going to show you the full extent that we have implemented, and then you can choose your own adventure, whether you want to implement as you know deeply as we have, or if you want a more basic automation for your lights based on your motion. Next, I'm going to look at the other automation for the basement game room lights, and that's to turn those off. So it's going to look to see if there's motion in any of the adjacent rooms or if the furnace room is, um, you know, has been closed. And we do that because if we're in the furnace room, it's a closet really right behind the camera then we want to make sure that the lights stay on out here and we don't you know, come out into the dark or that type of thing. So it just keeps it well lit if that room's open and we're in there doing something, you know, um, either fixing something or grabbing supplies or something that's, you know, in that closet, whatever the case may be. And then it's checking to make sure all the conditions are met, just not what triggered it. Because if the motion stops at one spot, that's not enough. We want it to stop everywhere. We want the furnace door to be closed. And we want that motion for the basement to be turned on, that virtual toggle. That way we know that we want to really interact through the automations. And if that's the case, it turns lights off in this area. So it's a very simple off automation in comparison to the on, but it really does the trick and it, you know, does exactly what we wanted to do. As you can see, we have automation set up for the other areas of our basement as well. And I'm hopeful that this, this segment was able to help you setting up the motion lights in your house and inspire you for maybe some of that little more creative, uh, logical solutions to work around some areas where you may have motion in adjacent rooms and keep these areas lit. To my final thoughts, I definitely recommend the Akara motion sensors. We have a bunch of them in our house now, and we just absolutely love them. You can have the LED shine when they detect motion, or like we do, you can just have it, you know, not light up at all. And uh, we think that's better. And then it just, you know, passes that message along to your Zigbee coordinator. And then your home assistant, you know, could take whatever actions you have programmed in with your automations. And, uh, you know, like I said, we have it set up where we walk around the house and don't need to touch anything. And it's really useful there.